Hi, I'm Dr. Aki Watanabe, and I'm Assistant Professor of Anatomy here at New York Institute of Technology, College of Osteopathic Medicine. And today, I'll be setting the record straight on some of the iconic scenes from the movie Jurassic Park. This is one of the first scenes from the first movie, Jurassic Park, and it's an iconic scene, and it shows the excitement of doing a paleontological dig. Uh, but as a paleontologist, there are some things that are odd about the scene. So the first thing is that you have the entire skeleton of an animal preserved as fossil. And this usually doesn't happen when you're uh, trying to dig up fossils. You usually only find fragments of bones or damaged pieces of bones. And so when I was uh, out doing field work in the Gobi Desert in Mongolia or Romania or most recently in Argentina, we never found an entire animal. We found just a limb bone or ribs, few uh, bones from the same individual or animal, uh, and not the entire skeleton. So that happens uh, very rarely when you see a, a full skeleton. And when you do, it's a huge discovery for paleontology. But typically, you only see a few pieces of bone. So this is one of the terrifying scenes in the movie. And the first time I saw Jurassic Park, I was in second grade. And I remember being scared for weeks with the scene, but also excited. And one of the lines that Dr. Grant, uh, Alan Grant, one of the characters in the movie, says is that T-Rex can't see as long as you're not moving. But I think that T-Rex saw just fine. And the research basis for why maybe they mention this in, in the movie is because uh, when they saw the part of the brain case that holds the olfactory bulbs, uh, which are uh, places that are responsible for sense of smell. They saw that it was uh, pretty well expanded. So they knew that T-Rex had a pretty good uh, sense of smell, but that doesn't mean that they didn't have a good vision, right? So there are animals like dogs that have really good sense of smell, but also could easily see other animals. So this is another scary moment in the movie, and people were freaked out because now they, from looking at the, seeing the movie, they're like, oh, dinosaurs can open doors. Um, and, but the range of motion in dinosaur wrist is they have a special bone called what's called semilunate carpal, and it's one of the wrist bones. And the way the shape of this bone is, you can, dinosaurs can only move their wrist in this direction. So they can't actually rotate their hand. So that means they can't actually turn the knobs. They can still actually, because they can still do this motion, they can still like karate chop and open the doors. So if you really want to prevent velociraptors from entering your home, you can actually buy those kind of spherical knobs. And because they can't rotate their hands, that would be the way to prevent velociraptor attacks in your home. So another thing with this scene is that uh, the way velociraptors have been depicted in the Jurassic Park movies is that they sort of have these reptilian scales. But we now know from dozens and dozens of fossils, especially coming, those coming from China, that they actually had feathers, uh, velociraptors and their kins. Um, so velociraptors actually should be feathered in these movies. Um, and we're finding out with more research in the last couple or few decades that a lot of the features that we associate with birds, like feathers, wishbones, hollow bones, those actually evolved first in their dinosaurian ancestors. And that's because birds not only evolved from dinosaurs, but they're a valid member of the bigger dinosaur group, just like how humans are a member of primates. So if you're eating chicken or turkey on Thanksgiving Day, you're actually eating dinosaur meat, right? And that sounds more exciting than just, hey, I ate fried chicken last night. Thanks for watching, and for more information, check out nyit.edu.